Her debut novels, Divergent and Insurgent, both became New York Times bestsellers. And now the third and final in the trilogy, Allegiant, hits bookshelves on Tuesday. Joining us now is author Veronica Roth. Hi, Hi. Veronica. How, how are, are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Great. So I'm sure you have tons of fans who would love to see way more than three novels about these characters. How do you weigh that demand with just feeling like it's time to wrap up a series like this? I think sometimes people want more, but they don't realize what that would be like, mm -hmm. how maybe slow or stretched out the story would be. So I just try to be true to the story and do the best books that I can. And if that means fewer books, then so be it. And you have said that this book will have a firm resolution, no cliffhangers here. Right. Obviously, this has your fans freaking out. They are going to kill off Triss. Everyone. Four. Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> freaking out. So what's it like to develop these characters and then think, do I want to kill one of these guys off? I don't know. You. You can't get too attached. Um, I am attached, obviously, but I have to do what's going to be, I don't know, true to the, to the characters and to the story, and I just have to you know, think that way instead of thinking about how much I love them. The book is set in a futuristic Chicago. There are obviously these factions for bravery and selflessness. It's, you know, it's not the real world that we're living in in right. these books, mm -hmm. but is there anything in it that is inspired by your real life, either scenarios or characters that look like people you know in real life? I think Triss's struggle against fear is something that's very true to my experience. Um, as someone who struggles with anxiety, it was important for me to write a story about a character who was really engaging with fear and how to act despite being afraid. And um, I think her struggles are feel very human to me and may not be the exact same struggles that I'm having, but are always true to some kind of experience that I've had. What's the process like for you when you sat down and started writing? I mean, did you know that you wanted this to be a trilogy? Did you know where the characters would end up or did you just kind of wing it? The first one I really just winged it because I really didn't know what the books could become or, you know, if I didn't have an agent, I didn't have a publisher, I just wrote um, through to the end. So I didn't have a plan. <laughs> but then when I finished the first book, it occurred to me that the story needed to go on. It wasn't really done yet. Some of the earlier issues had been resolved, but there was still this, these greater issues that needed to be addressed. So I mapped out the other two books. And as I've gone on, they've gotten progressively more planned. And this book, it is going to be a lot different than the previous two because it's written from the voice of two of the main characters, from right. Triss and Four. I mean, is it difficult to get into both of their voices when you're so used to writing from one character? It really was. Um, I'm so used to her. She has been my like narrative companion for two books, and entering into his voice was strange and a little bewildering. And about halfway through the book, I stopped thinking about it so much, and I just I needed to get it down. So then I had to go back and fix it to make sure it still sounded like him and it was a challenge. The book, we, we are lucky enough to have it here today. It actually doesn't hit shelves until Tuesday, but a couple copies leaked early. They did, yeah. What's that like as the author? I mean, is there just a sinking feeling to know that it's out there before you wanted to be? Yeah, a little bit, just because I didn't want anyone else to be spoiled. I mean, I don't really mind people reading it early as long as they keep it in their little zone, but I decided to just trust my readers to be responsible, and for the most part, they were. They were very kind to their fellow readers and kept things to themselves. Any hints on what you might be uh, turning to next after this? I don't really know. I'm going to take a little break, <laughs> but... I think you've probably earned it. <laughs> well, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that I love my audience, and I want to keep writing for teens, so it'll still be young adult. All right, that's great. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, when they would get book advances, they might take a trip, they might buy a new wardrobe, they might even buy a new house. You decided to fill a bathtub with mini marshmallows. I did do that. And <laughs> jump into it. Yep. So any plans to celebrate this book in, with a, something weird? <laughs> in a similar sweet tooth fashion? I don't know. I keep trying to think of something I could jump into to, to keep the theme alive, but I feel a little like everything else is really wasteful, so I have to think about it some more. Maybe some jello. Yeah. All, right. All right, some jello. All right, yeah, great. We'll, we'll, we'll be on the lookout for videos of you jumping into pools of jello. Don't hold me to that. <laughs>